or something. <laughs> okay, morning everybody to the first Cygnus Cafe of 2021. Um, today we're joined with Tara who's hosting and uh, Wendy Lee who's our speaker. So over to you Tara. Lovely, thank you. So good morning everybody and a very, very happy new year and welcome to Cygnus Cafe. I'm Tara Van Spreckelsen, uh, for the people who don't know me, and I'm in for Linda today. So Linda's actually leading a funeral ceremony this morning, and uh, she asked me to send you a very big warm hello. And how grateful do I feel, and I'm sure you feel, that we are all here and healthy. So this morning we're delighted to welcome back a fantastic speaker on the power of thought. And I'm sure we all need to hear her positive, inspiring words of wisdom, especially in this chaotic world out there. So please let me introduce you to Wendy. So good morning, everybody. It's lovely to see some familiar faces and some that I haven't seen before. For those of you who haven't seen me before, I channel a group of energies that I call they, they come through me as soon as my glasses go on my head and take over what is needed to be said. And it was really interesting this morning because I, I, I texted Tara and I said, for gosh, I'm really nervous. And that to me is really exciting because it means that the energy and what they want to say to you today is high vibrational. And that's, we, we, we are shifting, we're moving. So the first thing there we can go. Okay, hi. So what they want to say to you, first of all, is ask yourself a question. When you, most of us watched or heard Boris's um, announcement at eight o'clock the other night, how did you feel about that? Did you go into a, a state of, of, of panic, of chaos? Was it exciting? How did you actually feel about that? Because on an earthly basis, on a linear basis, we have complete chaos and disaster happening just outside our front door. It's very fear inducing. And we were all hoping that somehow miraculously, when the clocks chime 12 on New Year's Eve, this would all go away. And it has been, although we knew it was going to re show its face, I think we said this right back in March, there's going to be three waves of this. Even the spiritual fraternity have lost the, 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 the excitement about this pandemic. The, the, good, the, the reasons that it's here for us, for our spiritual growth. And if you go back to last March, we were all in fairly comfortable lives. We were sat in a space of okayness. We had fed our ego desires to the extent that there's a few things we might have and we might not have wanted but we were all really comfortable but whilst we were all very comfortable we were in the process of destroying this planet the first lockdown showed the population how quickly earth itself can recover and she needs this next 12 weeks to really set that in motion the nature, the elementals, the earth needs this recovery period. So the first thing we can do is say, wow, yeah, this is nature's taking its course. This is really interesting. What bulbs are going to be able to show their faces because they're not trampled on? All sorts of wonderful things are gonna come out of nature in the next 12 to 15 weeks. We will see signs of new life. Now, we've talked, um, again, in the spiritual world, we have talked about old earth and new earth for decades. And I'm hoping most people understand, but for those of you who don't, it isn't a change of planet. We're not moving from one earth that we have destroyed and made into a mess into a beautiful earth that miraculously has appeared from somewhere, and we're going to be physically moving on to it. It isn't. The words old earth are describing the third dimensional life. That is a life of survival. That is a life of material desires and needs, a life of egotistical living 
um, where, where the money in your bank and the car you drive and the house that you live in are, are all very, very important because you, you have the impression that you, you're born and you have a life in the middle and then you die and, and you might or might not go on somewhere else. But this spiritual journey, you know, you know when you reach that tipping point, that real inner knowledge that says, oh my goodness me, we're not just this earthly body with this earthly thinking mind. We are much bigger than that. If we're much bigger than that, who or what are we? Well, supposing you really embody your soul now, because that is this journey. The journey is to be able to put the ego little mind to rest in book it back in its place we're not trying to get rid of it we're trying to just get it back into its energetic place so that we can bring more of who we really are into our bodies now if you have gone into a panic and a lot of people have gone into panic and fear as this next lockdown how are you going to cope i've been on my own i can't bear being on my own this is the time to say okay if this is happening for my spiritual growth and there is nothing meaning nothing in the universe that is trying to make my life difficult it is trying to help it become a happy beautiful life what is this pandemic showing me and even in the the, the depths of loss whether you have lost someone close to you whether you have lost your job whether you realize it's the end of a relationship that you've been limping along with for years and years, all of that is a blessing. Absolutely everything is a blessing. Somebody close to you dying is heartbreaking. But if you go through the heartbreak and out the other side, their life in your life was a blessing. And if you can move to the spiritual understanding that you've just been separated for a while, it takes this horrible sting out of death, which we're going to have to do at some stage, otherwise we can't shift further. So if someone close to you has died, you say, okay, is it serving their life, me being depressed, me living a flatline life, or would it serve their life? Does it celebrate their life? If I get on with it, if I get out of this bloody mood I'm in and shift myself, because we've all had old stories in the old earth, we have a story of who we are, why we are, where we are right now. And as I was just saying, it's kind of a comfort place. And a lot of our space, a lot of our time, say you wake up at eight o'clock in the morning and you go to bed at 10 o'clock at night. What's that? A 14 hour shift. You have to fill your space. Now, when you're a very third dimensional earthly being, you need other people to fill that space. You need other events and situations to fill your time. You need that You need that justification that you have a right to be here by other people filling that bowl of missing for you. When that is taken away from you, there's only one person that can fill that bowl and that's the spiritual journey. So when you're looking forward to doing something again, I can't wait until I heard this one, I can't wait until the sanctuary's open again, why? What are you missing? What is it about that sanctuary? Oh, it's face-to-face -face contact. We're, we're on face-to-face -face contact now. Do you see? We've got to go below. What is the fear? What is the fear if you never, ever go back to the sanctuary? The fear is I can't do my life purpose. Okay, so life purpose, they want to talk about this. There are two very different life purposes. One is an ego-based purpose, and one is a soul-based purpose. When you're an ego-based purpose, you want to get out to as many people, you want to see people, you want their gratitude, you want their appreciation, you want their thanks for what you're doing, you want to know that what you're doing is working and it's right, and you need the outside world to mark, if you like, where you are in your healing process, in your spiritual journey. With this pandemic, with this lockdown, we have been so invited to look at what we can do from where we are. And don't you understand that is the whole spiritual journey is being happy where you are in the skin you're in. Not going out to this person and that person and doing this and doing that. That's all old earth stuff. So the fifth dimensional world that they're talking about 
it's the world without all this drama, the world without all this control, manipulation and greed and need for ego stroking all the time. New Earth is beautiful. New Earth is without all these power struggles, without arguments, without the fear of the pandemic, without the fear of illness. That's where we're shifting the consciousness of the planet. The consciousness of the planet has been so low and so destructive. If this pandemic hadn't caught the, globally, we would have continued that soul, that, that, that soul path, that matrix of self-destruction. This has been a global reset, a huge wake-up call. So many people are waking up now. And you that are the advanced party, you sitting in this in this Zoom meeting right now, we, we need to up our ante a bit. We need to say, okay, if I am this energetic being, if I am a soul, and this is simply the vehicle, and I can't take my vehicle anywhere right now, what can I do with my energy? Well, on a third dimensional, low vibrational, look at me, poor me, victim mode mentality, you can't do very much at all. If you get yourself out of the way, you can, you can heal from where you are. And you can heal millions of people from where you are. So you're not going to the sanctuary and healing one person. You're sitting exactly where you are and healing out. And the more of us that join in with that healing out, the more healing out is going to happen. You don't need your props. Do you understand? You don't need them. You already are. You're just not using them. So this lockdown, are you going to go through the next 12 weeks on this flat line, I can't wait until I get out the other side? Or are you going to realize you could drop dead in the next hour? And that's an important message. It's, this is a real kick up the ass today. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and work out why this is affecting you the way it's affecting you. Just say, if I put the little me and all these third dimensional emotional turmoil that I'm in at the moment, if I just put it to one side and sit quietly for a minute and say, if I am the bigger me, and if this is so, so loving and so kind and so generous, and I can now use this energy by using my thoughts in, in, a, in a positive direction, you will be fulfilling the mission you came to do. There isn't anybody who isn't where they are supposed to be right now. But we spend an awful lot of time saying, if only I had, or I should have, or they should have, and I will change when they change, if they didn't do this. You see, all of that is outside the soul journey. The soul journey is to look at all these things and say, well, everybody's on their soul journey. There is a, going to be an awful lot more chaos as the third old earth structure breaks down. It has been manipulated, it has been controlled, it has been under a fearless regime for eons. And the only way to break into the new earth, which is the, the consciousness lift into the new earth, is for each and every one of us to individually know that we chose to be on this mission to do this. We said that when this whatever event was going to happen, happened, we would be on the front line from our energetic point of view, not running around like blue ass flies, not sitting mourning what you've lost, that isn't here right now. Looking forward to what's going to come back when everything gets back to normal. Absolutely not. This six to 12 week period here is for deep introspection. Do you like you? Because if you liked you enough, you would love spending time in your home company. If you liked you enough, 
you would want to expand your knowledge. You would want to expand what you already know and make it bigger. You'd want to be more of who you are. Are you using this pandemic as an excuse to stay small? The one thing that almost all spiritual people came down to experience, or we, we said we would experience, and we would put ourselves into situations to give us the opportunity to experience is lack of self-worth. And most of us on this journey have had friends and partners and teachers and parents and siblings who have offered us a whole big helping of you're not worth as much as I am. That teacher in the, cl in the classroom tells you to shut up is saying to you, you're worth less than I am. That mother that says you are tired, go to bed is saying, I'm more important than you are. These are the messages we had since the day we were born. It's not surprising. We have no self-worth. So when you understand the soul journey, you know that we're all worth the same. There isn't anybody with more power than somebody else. Our, the only power somebody else has over us is the power we give them. So are you giving this pandemic your power? Are you saying, I can't live with this, it's, it, I'm on my own again, I'm in the flat again, I can't get outside again? Or are you saying, right, okay, this is another opportunity to look at more of who I am. And that is so exciting. It is so exciting. And every time you move out to, I can't wait until, or you move back into, I wish this was, you're not in the now. And the spiritual journey is that recognition is there is only the now. And with the law of attraction, with the laws of the universe that are immutable, you can't argue with them. What you are thinking, what you are emitting from your heart is what is going out to the universe. And that is what's going to come back to you. But more importantly, because you are spiritual beings on the spiritual mission, you said when we get into the space, when we can stop and spend some time just being will use our energy to brighten and lighten the planet, to brighten and lighten the world. So you ask, you ask yourself the question, are you more beneficial to the planet, to those that have passed, to those that have given their lives, to bump up the numbers, so this, this is enormous. These the souls that said, I'll come down and when the pandemic comes, I'm just going to take it out. These souls are heroes. Are we doing them any benefit by sitting like this? Because when we're sitting like this, our energy is going out like this and it's going nowhere. Well, it is, it's feeding the lower energy stuff. Make life more fun, whatever has happened. Whatever your story used to be, you have an opportunity now to change that story. So if your story was that you're claustrophobic, or you're frightened of spiders. Work on that fear. Say, right, do I want that to be my story anymore? If I arrived today and I was presented with everything I'm presented with, the people that are living in my house, the, the career I have, the past I have, the, the, you know, not the past so much, no. If you arrived today and everything was fresh and new, what would you keep? What would you, what, if you, this was your new life, right? Here you are, like a walk-in. Let's look around. Do you want all this stuff in your life? What would you let go of? What would you keep? Who would you keep in your life? Who would you let go of in your life? Are you being honest with yourself? Or are you still playing that little person who's not quite as good as somebody else? And this is a bit of a relief that you can hide back into, into a little world again. Sitting in quiet meditation, aligning your higher self with your thoughts, with your heart, in total love and compassion, is worth more to this planetary uplift than seeing five people in your clinic today. But the ego self is saying, no, I need to see the people in the clinic today. And I don't doubt that that will come back we are not saying that will not return but what they're saying is this is the opportunity to see how 
by lifting these energies now, we are joining energies with anybody else that's lifting this planet. So I think the message today so clearly is stop being in your little selves now. Stop being in there. Start blossoming. What does that look like? What does blossoming look like? We're very, very comfortable in our comfortable lives, but what would an amazing life look like? What would a miraculous life look like? If you could do anything, if you ask yourself the question, what am I missing to have what I'd like to do? If I had a million pounds, I would do so and so. Or I would do so and so if I had a million pounds. Now, they want you to get all, the, all of that out of the way and really work out that I, what I would do. Do you see? Take out the money, take out this. If I didn't have four kids, I would do so and so and so. Take all that away and look at what I would do. Now, your little mind's going to go, yeah, and that's, that's way out there. That's way out of possibilities. We can't possibly do that. We look at all the responsibility out. Look at all this. But what if, what if you could make that dream come true? What if? Wouldn't this next period of time be that time when you can build on that energy? Build on that. Right, I want to go and walk the cliffs of Dover. Just a simple thing. Just something simple like that. So you start, and aren't we all wonderfully lucky to have these computers? And there's not one of you say, I can't go onto the internet because we're all on the internet. There's such a wealth of information out there. And if you are hands-on healing, look into other modalities. How else can you use your healing, your healing gifts? And they are fabulous gifts. And you know they work because they've been proved. And if you're not there yet, you are now. It's like anybody coming onto the internet now. They don't have to start with a great big computer next to them and start all that business again. They come straight in to the knowledge it is here now. So if you haven't been healing for healing for the planet, if you don't think your thoughts and your energy have any power outside you, start looking that up. See how far you can send your energy far and wide. And you can feel it. You can send your energy and feel how far out your energy goes. And when you do that, when we live heart-based, what would my heart like to do today? And what's the closest thing to that? So my heart would like to see my best friend today. What's the closest thing? Well, the closest thing is, is FaceTime or the telephone. There's no excuse to be under par because we can't do something. It's the excitement of not being able to do something to say, right, what can I do? What about spending the next couple of months getting fit? Because you know what? There's only two types of suffering. There's a mental suffering and a physical suffering. So are you a mental sufferer or are you a physical sufferer? Are you sitting there not well, mentally or physically? Now, you can say, right, okay, if I'm working on me and my spiritual journey, let's get this physical body in as much shape as I can possibly do. What does that take? What would I need to incorporate in my day to make me a little bit fitter? And that's not a bad thing because you may get this virus. And if you're fit, that's a really good thing. Whatever your interests are, this is the time to expand on them. From a bigger picture, every time we let go now of the little ego stuff, he did this to me, she did that to me, I can't believe this was happening, all this stuff. Every time we say, do you know what? I'm not living with that nonsense anymore. I can cut that and let it go. We sever a cord to this earth, the, this, this old earth mentality, the old earth energy. It gets severed. Every single time one of us says, I'm not going to get depressed about that, or I'm going to make this fun, or I'm going to see how I can be cheerful through this, whatever it is. We sever the cord. Now, what's so exciting about that is that we've been walking in this field of energy for such a long time this field of energy is available to us now we're, we're, it's all there and yet we keep being invited to walk back in this field of energy so you might have someone in your life that is push pulling a, 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 an argument maybe an ex maybe a friend doesn't matter who it is maybe a parent but you've got this power thing going on just as, as one of Linda's favorite things, as I say, you know, the one person's got the rope, you've got the rope, drop the rope and, and move on. 
when you find yourself finding yourself thinking why did that person do that to me just say right what did that person do that for me do i want that person in my life anymore is there any truth in what that person said why am i fighting this person what am i trying to what am i gaining from this what if i just let it go and just be peaceful wow just being calm just being peaceful is helping the planet because you're not making waves if you can be calm and peaceful in your heart, drop it into your heart and let that energy go out. You're spreading the love across the planet. And every time you do that, every time you say, right, do you know what? I'm not going to argue with my friend anymore because it's not a friendly thing to do. I'm not arguing. I'm not, I'm, I'm not battling for my, my, my mother's attention from my sisters or brothers. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm simply going to accept that I have a right to be here. I volunteer to be here. And the whole purpose of being here is to get rid of this crap so that we can move into this. Now, when you say I'm worth more than that, that's, that's like the three magic words. No, I'm worth more than that, five magic words. I'm worth more than that. I'm not gonna be treated like that anymore. I'm not doing that to myself anymore. I'm worth more than that. You sever that tie now. There's no more karmic return on that. So this big shift is huge because every time you do that to yourself, for yourself, for yourself, I'm not eating that plate of donuts anymore. I'm not doing that for my body. I'm worth more than that. That whatever tie it was to keep eating may or may not show its face, and then you can deal with that. But you're worth more. So you've you leave it behind, you sever that. Now, what we have over here is a brand new, a brand new field of energy, a brand new matrix, a brand new opportunity. There's a there's, there's things we don't know are available yet, are about to appear for all of us. But if we're living in fear and old patterns of behavior and old stuff because we get triggered and we don't want to feel that trigger, then we're going to be very stuck where we are. I suggest you welcome every emotion that comes in. You deal with that emotion. If you if you can find the seed of creation of that emotion, do so. And if you can't, just say, well, this is an old emotion. This is where I end up. I end up not talking to anybody, or I end up depressed, or I end up this, or I end up that. Stop and say, right, that's the old me. Let's cut the ties to that. And what's the new me look like? The new me wakes up saying, good, I'm alive. There's a lot of people that aren't today. And I can appreciate this life and I can find out what I'm doing here. What is the purpose of me being here? The purpose of you being here is to find that you are the soul in the body. And from there, life just simply opens and opens and opens, opens because the universe is conspiring for all of us to have heaven on earth. What is your heaven on earth? If you go back to last March, it was not heaven on earth. It was mediocre. It was okay. We stepped through every single day. We got the children to school. We did this, we did that. And yes, there were little sparks of joy here and little sparks of joy there. What about that? Do you want to put into your future? Well, if there's a, a portions of that, you say, yeah, that really brought me joy. Then yes, put it here. But stop in the middle and say, what we joy because. I love bathing in other people's love. I love bathing in appreciation. I love going for a walk with a friend. I love my dogs. Stop in the middle and just start feeling. How is that heart feeling? Because this is what you're telling the universe. And if you want to manifest something more than you have now, then we need to start looking at how that's possible. What are we doing that we can, we can bring those manifestations into, into play? And if there's something... It's been said many times, 2020 was the year of clear vision. A lot of things have come to light, not only globally, but politically, um, in religion, all sorts of sects and, and bits and pieces all coming to light. It's going to show itself more. Now, we can either be in that chaos or stand back, pouring love and light. The fact that these things have always been go going on, it's not as though they haven't been going on, but they're coming to light now. And when you are triggered into an emotion, understand that that trigger of emotion is, is past, it's from the past. And it's not coming back to revisit to stay. It's coming back to, to be moved through and, let, and released and let go. And the most powerful tool for that, of course, is the violet flame. 
So when you get an emotion or you wake up in the morning and you're slightly under par, the first thing to do is raise your arms. So I said this on Monday to a meeting. I'm alive. I might be a bit depressed, but I'm alive. You know, just celebrate that. Because if you're still alive, you haven't finished your journey. So we, we need to get out this flat line. We need to get out this panic. We need to get out this fear and go into joy and appreciation. And what can I do today? If I could have anything or do anything, what, what would that look like? And what would I do today? What would I do today to improve my life? What that Because every bit that you improve of your life is going to improve the life of those people around you. It has to. I would um, really welcome any questions. Have there any commentaries? As you know, there's my glasses on my head. I haven't got a clue what's going on out there. I just literally... Oh, thank you, Wendy. That's so funny because I've just posted in the group just before you were finished in. So uh, we're very much in sync. So uh, if there are any questions for Wendy, um, pop them in the chat. Um, and also I'll, I'll check on Facebook as well. Um, I think, you know, you've hit on today, as always, Wendy, you're always spot on with tapping into where people are at you know, as a society. So um, I'd say one of the key questions that I would have perhaps is if we think about February, March, um, you know, and particularly in the UK, different, because we've got audiences here from all over the place, you know, they're in different positions, but, you know, with people in lockdown now for February, March, is there anything else that they can be thinking or doing that will help give them a boost or a lift? Find out what you love. Find out what you love doing and do more of it. So if that's knitting, knit for a purpose, yeah? If that's studying accounts, do it for a purpose. We, we, we're in a dual thing here now where, where we, we need to really polish ourselves yeah, and there's no polish for that friction. You have to, you have to have that. So we're doing that, but also this realization that this is what we came for. I, I'm 60 in a couple of weeks' time, and I have talked about this moment in time all of my spiritual journey. This is the moment we've been waiting for, and that's why it would be such a shame for all of us to go, "Oh my God, this is awful." Yeah. When you feel yourself in there, ask yourself that question: What would it take to make me feel? more alive, more part of the bigger picture, because the law of one, you cannot be separated. So one of the soul journeys for the spiritualist was to feel separated, because otherwise we wouldn't then have looked to be not separated. You see, that's the part of this. When you hit rock bottom and you think you're on your own, that's when you start looking for, for others around you. And that's when you realize we are all one, therefore we can't be separate. You see, that's the soul journey. So if you're feeling separated just think well okay the little me is feeling separated what would it take to open my mind a little bit more why don't I just go and look at a flower for a minute and look at the exquisite creation within that plant yeah and then go back to your little me expansion 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 because even the is it even the appreciation of a plant you're feeding that plant that plant then feeds out but everything's energy everything's energy do you see so be more aware on on a minute to minute almost basis where am i putting my energy if i suddenly suck into what um, a worry am i worried about something okay what is worry gonna do what is it what will that prove okay so you can question what you think you're worrying doing. so even that's a, a question you see that's interesting i i tend to worry about everything right so write that down I'm a warrior. Um, Tara, um, who introduced me in the, in the beginning, we've, we're doing a course starting on next Monday, the 11th. It's a six week course. And it's about finding about more about your spiritual journey, how you can produce more, how you can manifest more, how about thoughts of power. It's a very, it's going to be a very interesting course. I know that because we haven't had the information yet. Those that are you are channelers, go above the channeling that you're doing now ask for higher intelligence to come through. 
do you see don't don't block yourself again we have this limitation where we think we are and and that's our ceiling and we don't go any further than that we, we need to look at that as our floor now you see so how can i find out more about myself can what courses can i take what there's so many free webinars free stuff on youtube how can i expand my knowledge you see the moment you go on that third dimensional old earth journey of poor me da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da, the further you go into that the harder it is to come out the moment you can catch it and go oh my goodness me look at what i'm thinking about you realize that you're the one that's thinking about what you're thinking about rather than being those thoughts the third dimensional old us person lives in their thoughts and and, and operates from those thoughts you see the spiritual understanding person says, oh, God, those thoughts aren't serving me at all. How are we going to clear those? What can we do? And what can we replace those with to do this out here? Do you see? Yeah, lovely. Every day. Live with a purpose every day. Not this, oh, God, we're in lockdown. Oh, well, I'll, yeah. For us. Well, we can. That's the beauty of life, isn't it? Is it? That's our choice, too. That's our choice, too. Absolutely. Thank you. And um, a lot of people are just sharing in here. Thank you so much, Wendy. Just what we needed to hear today to give us a boost. Um, don't have any specific questions. Uh, there's one or two people asking about the course. So Tara's uh, added the details there. So if you are interested in that course uh, with Wendy and Tara. Uh, it's it so one that because there's going to be this expansion and over Christmas, you know, from the 11th to the 11th, that was the that was the gateways. The, 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 the 1111 are always a gateway. So if you ever see those numbers and you continue to see those numbers, you know that that's a sign from the universe that you have a new, we have a new system going through. We then had conjunctions, we had, oh, oh my God, the power and the and the amount of light energy that we have now received from, from the higher realms. We are being cradled and lifted into this this new earth you see the new earth is living joyously living in love living in passion and, and waking up with that i'm alive feeling not having to force it not having to push it we're, we're so close now to that it, 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 it's palatable it's it's it, it well you can see it in me it, it's here do you see we're, we're living in it and the secret is to be so observant when this catches us because this catching us is exciting because then we say okay so i can now cut this cord ask archangel michael your angels come in cut this cord to feeling jealous for instance if something comes up and you're triggered in jealousy or envy or whatever that is you know anger irritation all these low low vibrational thoughts of which are going to be rife out there there's going to be emotional chaos because people are waking up, yeah? And to do that, there's going to be this trigger. Well, if you're standing in the way and you get triggered, don't get don't, don't re react straight away. Go, oh, wow, that triggered me. Oh, I'm irritable. Why am I irritable about that? What's it, what is it in me that I'm frightened of? Because an irritability or any lower vibrational emotion is a protection to say, this happened to you before and it's dangerous, you see? So being aware of how you're feeling and what you can do and how you can twist that round, it, it, that's, that's, the, that's the secret, that's the goal. And I say, and study more, study, study, study. I can see things popping up. Are these just nice messages or are they um, questions? Yeah, they're, they're all very nice messages. So uh, there's no questions directly. So other than uh, the details for the course, which Tara shared. Which Tara will have, yeah. And isn't it exciting? Do you, do you feel that sense of excitement? It, it, it is buzzing out there. And you will feel when you walk around again, we've got this and we've got this. The first lockdown, we followed the lead up. The second lockdown was chaos because nobody wanted to follow the leader. This third lockdown is, is individuality. What, what do we feel about this? What sense of responsibility do we have? What do we feel about the conspiracies about the virus itself? I mean, all this, this is popping up. So the virus apparently is a complete, and I know, you know, it's, it's not even around. And then the vaccines that are going to get us all operated like robots. What, look at the fear and all that. Study yourself. How do you really feel about it? You know, I was thinking this morning, if I was in Australia and somebody said there's a shark in the water, I wouldn't go in the water. Would you? 
Yeah, there's a virus out there. Take precautions, look after yourself, look after the other people. If you feel like having the, the vaccine and it and it offered the vaccine and it feels right, take it. If it doesn't, leave it alone. But wish it luck, you see, and love, because even just the thought and the feeling of everybody that receives the vaccine, may they live in joy and health, you've tapped into that energy and you and, and you're using your energy. And if you think, oh God, now I've got all this energy and I don't know where to put it, give it to the angels to do what they feel is appropriate. Just say, I have all this energy today and all this love today. I give it to the angels. Angels, you take it wherever you'd like it to go. Do you see how you're, you're just doing this? And this is exciting now. It, it's an interesting time. We can get rid of our crap. We can get rid of our old stories and we can create a brand new story. And with this brand new story comes a brand new karmic revolution. So the better it gets, the better it gets, the better it gets. There's nothing doom and gloom on this planet right now. And if you're in grief because you have lost someone, praise the fact that that soul was brave enough to come and do this and go home again. And they are now in the next vibrational field, ready to help us and assist us. You think how many people have gone, how many people are still there, out there, waiting to help us, to impart their knowledge and what they've known. And we're shutting them off going, oh God, they're dead. Now, I'm not decrying that it is painful when you lose somebody. It was my father's birthday yesterday. I, he's been gone for eight years and I had a sudden memory and I sobbed my heart out. But rather than think, oh God, this is awful, I miss my... Just go, this is interesting. I still have grief. To, this is this is third dimensional grief. Do you see? And that's okay. Make everything okay. If you're feeling really low, that, it's okay. It's okay. But do you want to stay there? Give yourself a hug, go, right? Okay. Feeling a bit better today, but... You know, let's let us let us not for five minutes. If five minutes I was five years old, what would I do? Well, sit on the floor and go backwards on your bottom. Do something, shake yourself out of your malady. Don't sit in it because it just it festers and it, and it's it doesn't serve anybody. Teresa. That's wonderful, Wendy. Thank you so much. All right, so um, I think if there's no more questions, any final words that you'd like to share, Wendy, or any final thoughts just as we wrap up? Yeah, live in the now. Happiness isn't over there, and it isn't over there. It's not what was and what it's going to be. It's right here, right now. And if you can find something to lift your energy one degree, your whole life will stop changing. And do that on a daily basis. What can I appreciate today? What can I appreciate? Because appreciation is the highest vibration, you see. It's, it, it's love, isn't it? Appreciation. It, it's, it, that is, that's there. Lovely. Thank you. Tara, would you like to uh, wrap up? Yeah. Well, that is a wonderful, even though I work at Wendy on a weekly basis, I'm always reminded to just you know, beautiful to reboot. And I'm already thinking right now what I'm going to do after this meeting, I'm off to the garage to declutter. I feel a real charge of energy. <laughs> so thank you so much, Wendy. We've really enjoyed it. And um, I'm the lucky one that I get to see her weekly. <laughs> Can I just interrupt one more thing is, is um, they, they, they're asking you to do. If you have nothing to do, <coughs> excuse me, get out your old photo albums. Clear out your old photo albums. You know, how many people have got albums and photos? If you haven't, that's 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 that. But it is a good way of, of triggering old emotions and also letting go of old stuff. It's good to clutter. Oh, sorry, Tara, I interrupted you, but it's just, just a quick thought. You know, we were talking on Monday. Um, declutter, declutter your Facebook, declutter your telephone, declutter. We've all de decluttered, but do it again, sort it out again, start, you know, removing this stuff so that we can invite more of this in. Yeah, it's wonderful. I can feel that energy already. Thank you so much, Wendy. We really You're really welcome, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it today. So, for, for anything else, do ask Tara. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. All right. So as we always do, thank you so much, Tara, as well, for uh, hosting us today. Uh, we are going to move into a cup and a chat in a moment. 
Um, just some things that are coming up. So Cygnus Cafe is in two weeks time. Um, we've got a number of wonderful speakers coming in through January and February. Um, if you want to stay connected, we have our Facebook group. Um, so that's the Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. Uh, there's also a newsletter that you can join. So just go out onto the website and then um, you can go through there um, and pop your email address in. Um, so that's a great way to keep connected. Next week, we're back at Thursday at two uh, with meditation. So that's on the, the typical meditation number. So uh, all, all details on the website and Facebook group. Okay, take care to everyone that's joining us on Facebook Live. And see you next week. <laughs>